Yes, I believe. Oh, uh, Douglas Voigt. Yes, I have checked into Douglas Voigt. You, you have to understand. My data sets that show the year 2046 are not at all what Douglas Voigt did. The uh, Diebold Foundation, their research on 2046, I looked into that because other people told me that I'm not the only one talking about 2046 being an event involving the Earth and the Sun. My data sets involve ancient history and showing mathematical patterns that show an orbital periodicity of an object that comes every 792 years and it's going to be here in 2046. A lot of people call it Nibiru, but Zechariah Sitchin totally foobarred that whole term, so I call it ne Nemesis X object because I don't need other people uh, attributing that baggage that Sitchin created to, to the object that I'm, I'm referring to because the object I'm referring to is supported in the historical record. The Nibiru of Zechariah Sitchin is not, not based off Zechariah Sitchin's data. So, the Diebold Foundation, the he got his year 2046 from a single reference in the scripture for which he interpreted through Gematria. That's a very different type of deduction than I have done. My deduction comes from multiple different sources, multiple different mathematical vantage points. So I can take his data and I can I can bring it, you know, into the fold of my own and I can cite him as as a, a very interesting tangent, but I could never cite him as a source. Because I can't accept the gematria as having any type of historical relevance. Gematria to me is very interesting. There are many gematrical mysteries that I've come in contact with in my research. Gematria is fascinating. But just like there's a there's there's gematria in the Bible, such as in the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah is a very obscure pack, passage that could only concern the Great Pyramid of Egypt. All the details are there as the physical location and all that. It concerns the Great Pyramid, and researchers 200 years ago isolated that passage in Isaiah as referring to the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and the Great Pyramid of Egypt is 5,449 pyramid inches tall. That passage that refers to the Great Pyramid is has a geometrical value in Hebrew of 5,449. So yeah, there's many geometrical mysteries that are very interesting, and there and I was interviewed. I was interviewed by a guy. Uh, decode your reality. I can't remember his name. Uh, I don't even have a way to contact him. I left a comment on one of his uh, deals. I was I was really wanting to send him a list of terms to look up, and we would do a, a show together or something. But you know what? I can't even, I can't figure out how to contact with him. I'm not going to waste time trying to. But uh, I wanted to send him because he's a really knowledgeable guy when it comes to gematria, and I wanted to send him terms like Phoenix and Typhon, Typhonius, and all these. Uh, uh, Similacrum, Holosphere, all these different that are relative to my research and see what he came up with to see if I can find any type of derivative information that he may not know. So, uh, yeah, that, that's not going to happen. It's he, He's got too much going on. So, um, Gematria does have its value. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I can't go with the Diebold deal because that's the sole, that's the sole uh, conclusion of the Diebold foundation based off a single geometrical passage about 2046. I was really hoping when I looked into it that they're going to have all kinds of scientific information or some type of historical chronology I could I could look up that I was unaware of and I, I was really upset by not finding anything worth I could really I could use.